she took down the uh, video. Now, this is coming right. from a source and people coming from my DMs that's telling me this. But the reason why she actually took down the interview is because she just found out that I've already known that Kaylin is actually guilty of not actually raping these girls, but as of actually having sex with a minor. That I've already known that Kaylin is actually guilty of not actually raping these girls, but as of actually having sex with a minor. That I've already known that Kaylin is actually guilty of not actually raping these girls, but as of actually having sex with a minor. Hey guys, how's everyone doing? <laughs> I, I like your comment. What just came on? What is going on? Uh, so if anybody's been living under a rock, by the way, shout out to everyone in the chat. Um, I, I got to tell you guys something. It's a little secret. Um, some of you guys might already know this and some of you guys might not, but um, I have severe ADHD. Okay. The rabbit has ADHD. And so one of the things that I've learned to be my superpower as an ADHD, you know, rabbit is that I tend to get fixated on the things that don't make sense. So shout out to Toxic Diamond. She had an interview this weekend that I thought was very interesting because um, just of the context and the things that were said, I actually watched it about eight times because I wanted, I was like, something, something's wrong with this interview. Oh, see, just Jay, yeah. We have ADHD. And so one thing about us with ADHD rabbits, we will get fixated on the things that don't make sense. So I am that rabbit that when I sit there and something doesn't quite make sense, I will revisit it until it does. I won't move on from it until it does. So uh, it's always good to have good people in your corner for that to kind of help you out. But anyways, so Toxic Diamond had a little interview with a blogger by the name of uh, New Jack City. Um, his name is, well, his real name is Tyler. And um, he is on this mission right now. And I also got some receipts from a undercover person that I'm not going to name or anything. But I got some receipts about um, Kaylin Walker, KR. Okay. And who is, is, and a lot of people did not capture early on, was that the accusations were actually on minors. So this wasn't like uh, uh, women of age, the, an issue of, of consent. There were some of these victims that were minors. Okay, so the um, Los Angeles Police Department had posted up some information. You guys can find this again. Just Google it and type his name up. And you will see that there was a case number that was generated in 2018 where um, the, the police were basically classifying him as a serial rapist in the community. OK, so the interesting part was that in that interview with Toxic Diamond and this blogger, Tyler, uh, and again, you guys feel free to you know check them out and everything. Um, the interesting part was the level of advocacy that was coming from this person. And I wanted to understand why. The other part, too, was that Tasha had done an interview as well as other bigger bloggers like Mob Radio. Shout out to her. Wiley actually did an impromptu interview this like two days ago this weekend um, on this situation. And um, those interviews have been removed. And part of it, what my understanding is, I kind of wonder, at least I wonder, you know, whether people knew that some of the victims were minors, because if there's if they're minors, you're not going to find a lot of court information on them. You know, they're protected, obviously. Um, and then the the age so far that I know of was I believe the youngest one was 15. OK, so. Honestly, it's it's a little bit of a crazy situation, but I'm going to let you guys listen to this advocate and what he says, and then also just find out what the intentions are behind this, okay? I got some receipts, exclusive, but I also broke down this interview because, like I said, if I had to watch it five to eight times, it's because something wasn't quite making sense, and I don't know if everybody captured everything that needed to be heard. All right, let's start this receipt.
That's exactly what yeah, I said. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna show all of them while we sit here and talk and hope they read. Well, I'm gonna I want to read them out, but go, go ahead. Okay, she said it says, "Hey Tasha, my name is Tyler, aka New Jack City on YouTube. I have a story and business proposition you might be interested in." I'm working with a movie star named Kalen K.R. Walker. He was in the movie Superfly, lead villain. Also, he was in the movie Underground King with Holly Berry. He's been accused of uh, 20 counts of sexual assault and has been fighting on social media with his ex Kalani the singer about how he was abusive in their relationship. There's so much more to the story that I can write, but I will leave it at this. He is out on bail. His counts have dropped from 20 to 10, and it looks like the case might be dropped. Now, I just want to speak to that part. Well, nope, let's keep going before we go there. It's over. That's, that's the story. The business proposition is, I would like to do a YouTube with you, myself, and Kalen on your platform so he can explain the story to you and you can tell your audience. Um, and you can tell your audience on how... I'm linked to the story for them to get more information on the story if they're invested in it. I can get you in contact with Kalen because I do have his number. I set up an interview with him already with Dr. Umar Johnson, and I just wanted to extend the invitation to certain platforms. I like and think our great bloggers. Here's my number. Please give me a call when you can, and I look forward to it. Then it goes on to say, Okay, she says, okay, I'll have Chelsea set up an interview. You guys start a group chat or a, a video chat. You say, hey, Tasha, can you give me a call? Just a little confused on what happened or what happened. Thanks. She says, I'm tired of Chelsea called and set everything up. What's up? That sounds so much like her. That's that's, yeah, that's, like that's blowing shit off. Very right? integrity that's been for me. Yeah. So then you go on to say, yeah, we was under the impression from the phone call and message that I sent you that I would be sitting in the inner on the interview providing context on the alleged victim that sent him to jail. And she says, you and I never talked, so I'm a little confused. And um and so what she did was she basically took took it took the information you gave her, didn't contact you, went over your head talked to him and then said, you and I never talked, even though you initiated conversation with her yeah. about this clearly. Then she says, you and I never talked. I'm a little confused. You sent a number. I had my producer set everything up. Now, I know for a fact that number that you sent was your number. Mm -hmm. I know that for a fact. I skimmed through the messages and passed it to my producer. Um, then she says, or you say, got you. Understandable. Well, yeah, the message I sent was saying I would like to sit in the interview and phone call I had with your producer. I was confirming that me and Kaylin would both be going to Atlanta to sit in, which she said would be cool. But when I got off the phone with her, she said she passed the message on to you. So that's why I'm confused, laughing out loud. So she goes on to say, are you his manager? I'm confused too, no shade, promise. I wish I could talk. Oh, girl. So, <laughs> But you know, hold on, but real quick, you see how you see how eager she was before 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 uh before she uh, she got in contact with Kaylin. She was like she was eager to uh, you know give me a call and have Chelsea call me. But as soon as she got that, oh you busy, you Hollywood, you doing all this other shit. It's like okay, for sure, for sure. Right. I see, I see right. what type, I see what temper she wants. Yeah, right. definitely, definitely. So you say question for you. Since I got you in contact with Kaylin, this story is about to blow on your channel, and I was in, and I was no credited at all. From my knowledge, could you repay me by doing a collab video? You have a big audience. I know what this is going to do for your channel. I would think it would only be right for you to help out a small channel starting from the ground up to help out another brother in need? Question mark. She says, Tyler, I'm a professional. This is not professional. Unless it is in writing, I'm not obligated to do anything. And if you're really sincere about helping Kaylin, there will be no strings attached. I met his management and you are not part of the team. There is nothing I can do. I appreciate you reaching out. That's cold. That's cold blooded, Tasha. I'm just saying. <laughs> even for you. Even for you. Hold on. So then um, she said, I sent your messages to Kaylin, just FYI, and then you clearly liked it. 
Um, and she said, great, you showing Kaylin this is really not, you showing Kaylin this is really not a problem for me. Again, I work with him, not for him. But having that being said, I extend the olive branch to you trying to get you on a call, but now from, from you telling me that you showed all our messages to him, it shows that you were trying to start problems between me and Kaylin, which is fine. Kaylin knows how I talk and walk and that everything I do regarding my people is for my people. But let me unpack what you said. I gave you Kaylin because I believe in his story and because nobody on his team that I'm not a part of was stepping up and doing the work. Again, I'm for my people. Nobody was covering the story, so I step up and I did it because I love my people that much. But having that being said, yes, I also want to be compensated for the work I've done because what I'm doing is bigger than Kaylin. If you had hopped on a call with me, you would have understand that. But now that you showed me your colors, this will be the last message. Thank you. Okay. Uh, before you answer, um, ask your question, I do want to say this because I already know what people are trying to, uh, people are trying to, are going to say. They're going to say, oh, compensation. Oh, you're doing this for money. You're, you're, you're using, uh, Kaylin for money. I was not using Kaylin for money. And the reason why I wanted to be a part of it, because I wanted Kaylin to understand that whatever he says on live or on a, on a blog's form, first off, they don't care about you. And I wanted to be his, right. his PR. Exactly. I wanted to be on his PR team. So I wanted to speak for him because I didn't want him to go to jail because again, I, I'm his friend. I was telling him this when he was talking about the video that he was going to be doing with Tasha K, um, that he was going to be doing these, uh, uh, releasing the sex tapes and act and leaking them. He was going to have a, a blogger leak them. I kept telling him, bro, don't do that because if you do that, it's going to, it's only, they can use that against you. Let me speak for so, you. But so he did end up sending it to the sex tapes to Tasha K, right? Yep. It's on, uh, it was and on one me. of them. And one of them had a minor giving him fellatio, correct? And so he kind of incriminated himself. And so Tasha K then took down her live that she did with him defending him. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Uh, yes and no. Uh, it wasn't the girl that was giving him head. It was the one that he was, um, he was having sex with. So he was actually having sex with a minor. Yeah. And Tasha K saw that. Yes, but she didn't know it was a minor. I don't think she still does. Why did Tasha K take down her interview with Kaylin? Because she got in contact. Now, this is the rumor. She got in contact with two of the victims. And she's going to be interviewing with two of the victims. Kaylin, if you're watching this, because I know you're watching this right now, this is going to be tea for you. She's going to interview two of the victims and she's going to bat. She's throwing you under the fucking bus because guess what? She don't give a fuck about you, bro. Yeah. I wanted to understand the energy behind it. So was Tyler upset because of the dynamics between um, how the setup was right. So I was able to pull those DMS and messages. Um, and I actually was able to screen shoot them exactly because here's my concern. Okay. Here is my concern. I want to know, and I'm going to let you guys judge that whether there was an awareness that minors were involved. Right. And if Tyler was the one setting up the interviews, OK, which could happen. Right. He's an advocate. He's trying to advocate one thing after another. I get it. Why? Why? I'm going to ask you guys, why not tell that to Tasha and all the other bigger platforms? Right. Like, I'm just going to throw this out there. And I actually got pictures of these receipts. OK. So they're going a little bit too fast. I'm going to slow it down here, but I'm going to stop it here. Okay. And this is the intro. Now you got to pay attention to the dates because that's pretty important. The date that this was first sent out was June 14th. Okay. June 14th. And so then Tyler's introducing himself. He says, uh, I have a story and a business proposition you might be interested in. And this is what Toxique wrote in her, or what she read out actually in her interview, right? And so then 
in here he's saying i'm working with um kaylin walker uh, he's in this movie that movie he has been accused of 20 counts of sexual assault and has been fighting on social media with his ex okay and we know kalani right and um from there on he goes uh about how abusive the relationship was there's so much more to this story um but i can write about it but i'm gonna leave it out to this he is out on bail he is out on bail okay his counts have dropped from 20 to 10 and it looks like his case might be dropped okay but mind you in 2018 he was he was just like the man pled to something. OK, we just didn't all know that there was minors involved. It wasn't. I'm sure a lot of people in L.A. knew, but it didn't really come to light until recently as to why some of the minors like why was this buried or why wasn't this discussed? Now, this was Tyler's intro to Tasha. OK, we're going to move on to the next receipt. And then it says here. Uh, that the story, the business, that's the story. And the business proposition is to do, okay, this is the business proposition, is I would like to do a YouTube live with you, myself, and Kaylin on your platform so he can explain the story to you and I can tell your audience how I'm linked to the story and for them to get more information on the story if they are invested in. So my, when I stopped right there, I thought, okay, so uh, Tyler is a blogger. It sounds like he's also a friend. He's considering him a friend. Um, he's an advocate for him. But why would he need to be in that platform? I was just kind of curious. Well, what what is it that you're going to provide? Uh, because at the end of the day, he, you know, I'm just curious. What what substance is there? Did Tyler see something that we don't know? Is he a witness? Just curious. I don't know. And then he says, I can get you in contact with Kaylin Walker, okay, because I do have his number. Um, I set up an interview with him already and Dr. Umar Johnson, okay, and just want to extend the invitation to certain platforms I like and think are great bloggers. Here we covered up his number. We got that all covered. Perfect. Moving on. So then I pay attention to the dates again. Monday, June 14th. All right. It looks like here someone from Tasha's team responded or Tasha herself saying, OK, I will have Chelsea set up an interview and interview. There was a phone call. It sounds like um, Tyler started a video chat sometime around June 14th at 9 p.m. Uh, it was missed by, I believe, Tasha's team, the way this is set up. And then he responds to saying, hey, Tasha, can you give me a call, please? Just a little confused on what happen thanks hmm okay cool so then we keep going and then she responds i'm tied up chelsea called and set everything up what's up and then he says yeah we talked but i was under the impression from the phone call and the message i sent you that i would be sitting in on that interview providing context on the alleged victims that sent him to jail Right. So then she responds, you and I never talked, which if Chelsea picked up the phone or whoever the assistant was at that time, then I guess that's an accurate statement. You and I never talked. So I'm a little confused. You sent a number and I had my producer set everything up. Right. So then it goes into. The next little message there. She says, I skimmed through the messages and passed it on to my producer. All right. So she skimmed through the messages. She passed it on to the producer. Then he says, got you understandably well. Yeah, the message I sent, I was saying I would like to sit in on the interview. And the phone call I had with your producer and I was confirming that me and Kaylin would both be going to Atlanta to sit in, which she would be cool. But when I got off the phone with her, she said she passed the message on to you. So that's why I'm so confused. LOL, smiley face. So are you, we're still back on sitting in that interview. And I'm still trying to figure out the why. Because if Tyler's not the attorney, maybe he's an advocate, a family member, a friend. It sounds like 
you know, based on the interview, that's how he was presented. Is that really necessary? So then I sit back and I think, all right, so I get where Tyler's what Tyler's saying, but let's let's keep going on. And then we're still on again, June 14th. Oh, wait, this is an added receipt. Oh, don't tell me you reset me. Okay, here we go. I gave you guys a phone number. Yeah, I hit the start button. Here we go. And the plot thickens. Okay, 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 okay. So this is where he says, understandably. All right, let me pause it right here. So I'm confused, LOL, smiley face. And then she says, are you his manager? I'm confused too. No shade, promise. I wish I could talk. And then on the bottom, it says, none taken. I'm his business partner. That's all. I work with Kaylin and... And we'll continue on to the next one. So now he's presenting to himself to be a business partner, right? Like that's his representation now. But then I'm wondering, well, then if Chelsea or Tasha or whoever else in, in the Wino team decided to call and say, hey, um, are you Kaylin? What is, what is Tyler to you? Is he part of your business? Wouldn't that be an introduction that the celebrity would have done for him? I'm just curious. That's all. I'm throwing this out there. And here we go. And so it says, none taken. I'm his business partner. That's all. I work with Kaylin. And basically, I have been trying to reach out to platforms like yours to get his message across while also giving the audience more information that he doesn't have by directing them to my channel. Okay. Because I have evidence and facts that he cannot tell or he will go back to jail. Oh, okay. So to direct them back to your channel, you have evidence. He can't talk about it, but there's evidence that he can't talk about in your channel. I I'm just, I'm thinking logically, legally, does that sound like, you know, that, that sounds like a very complicated situation, right? So let's just say that uh, we are, we are in an interview and Tasha sits there and then um, Tyler says, come to my channel. I have evidence that's going to clear him. Isn't that a bit compromising, right? Especially when you know that there's victims or he's been charged or tried, or you don't even know or can't acknowledge if you knew that some of these victims were minors. That sounds pretty, pretty huge, right? And probably something that I wouldn't necessarily sign myself up on just because I don't know what's in your channel. I would have to have that vetted by my attorneys, right? I don't want to set anybody up. So then it continues. Okay. I will call you tomorrow when I get, when I touch down in Atlanta. I'm headed to the airport in Cali. Moving on. All right. So then he says, okay, great. Thanks. So you have a time frame on when you can call me only because I do have an interview with the YouTuber and just don't want it to look unprofessional. Me answering a phone call question mark. Also have a safe trip back. And then she says, not sure. We'll let you know in the morning. And now we are, this is all happening on the 14th guys. We're now on June 15th, which was Tuesday. So I'm sitting back and thinking, okay, so you got another interview with the YouTube platform. Mind you, he had met with uh, Dr. Umar Johnson. I believe it was the, actually it was the 8th of June. So all of these interviews are kind of happening the way they need to happen, right? They're all aligned. And then he says, are you free on the 15th? She responds. Actually, she doesn't respond. There is no, 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 no answer. No answer from TK. But then Sunday, all right, Sunday, which would have made it June 20th, there is a message from him that says, question for you, since I got you in contact with Kaylin, this story is about to blow on your channel. And I was, I was no credited at all. From my knowledge, could you repay me by doing a collab video? You have a big audience. I know what this is going to do for your channel. I would think it would be only right to do help out a small channel starting out from the ground up to help out another brother in need. Okay. So then, so then Tasha responds and says, or someone from Tasha's team, Tyler, I'm a professional. 
This is not professional. Unless it's in writing, I'm not obligated to do anything. Okay. And if you were really sincere about helping Kaylin, there would be no strings attached. I met his management and you were not part of the team. There is nothing I can do. And then on the bottom, you can't read it, but you'll see it on the next page. It's going to say, I appreciate you reaching out. We're going to play it. And then it says, I've sent our messages to Kaylin. Just an FYI. So then this is where I'm like, oh, okay. So I could see where you're about to maybe uncover something or maybe was Kaylin even aware of all this information? Like I know that he was, you know, making the connection Tyler was to the big platforms, but I have to remind you guys of something. I don't know if anybody knows here, but Kaylin does have his own YouTube channel. He has got about over hundred K of followers. Okay, much more bigger than many of us here, right? So if Kaylin wanted to do something to ensure that, you know, Tyler's channel would grow, why wouldn't he just take it upon himself to say something on his own channel? Just a thought, right? Just thinking. Yes, Jane. And then he says, your channel is about to blow. Laughing my ass off. That's right. In the long, lengthy message... Great. You showing Kaylin, this is really not a problem for me. Again, I work with him, not for him. But having that being said, I extend the olive branch to you trying to tell you on a call. But now you are telling me that you showed all the messages to him. It shows that you were really trying to start problems between me and Kaylin, which is fine. Kaylin knows how I walk and talk that everything I do regarding my people is for my people. But let me unpack what I said for you. I gave you Kalen because I believe in his story. And because nobody, nobody on his team I'm a part of was stepping up. Okay, nobody was covering the story. So I stepped up and did it because I love my people. All right. And then it says, um, I also want to be compensated for the work I have done because what I am doing is bigger than Kaylin. If you had hoped on a call with me, and I think it meant hopped on a call with me, uh, you would have understood that. But now that you uh, show me your colors, this is the last message. Thank you. Basically. All right. All right. So no, he did. Yes, he did. He did say that. He did say that. So I'm thinking in my mind. All right. So where did anybody catch in those messages? And please tell me, like I said, I got ADHD. That means I can also get lost on the things that don't always matter. But sometimes I'm really good about the things that matter. Did anybody catch in those messages where Tyler's telling, you know, Tasha, hey, Tasha, there might be some minors involved in this situation. Hey, Tasha, this is this is up, you know, this is what's going. I, I didn't see any of that, right? So in my mind, I'm thinking, well, then why would they take down the interview? Because it, it still doesn't quite answer it for me as I'm reading this information, right? As I'm reading this information, I am thinking, all right, let me sit back and just examine what's going on. If I am, if I'm Kaylin, okay, and my management team. You know, I have an advocate, just like think of back when R. Kelly, you know, we had that crisis manager that turned out to be a fraud. OK. Um, and again, I'm not saying that that's what Tyler is. Not at all. But what I'm saying is there are people that will come into your circle. And when you're in a time of need, sometimes you can't always weigh in to determine who's really in my circle to help me out. Right. Just thinking out loud. Right. So, yes, there is a trial set up and we're not done here because there was something in that interview that happened that a lot of people did not catch. But we did. We did. OK, I'm going to add that in here right now. And I'm all about intentionality. Let me put this on the stream. What we missed. OK. Clearly that played really, really fast. Let me slow it down a bit and we are going to talk about it. All right. What we missed in that interview with Toxic Diamond, there was communication between Toxic and Tyler. All right. 
And on the top, I said, wait, what is this saying? It says, by the way, that post wasn't a shot to you. It was a shot to KR because he said, I'm only going to get like get five views if I talk about him on my channel. Oh, oh, snap. OK, so I was thinking, well. I guess if, if Tyler is a smaller channel, yeah, that would get a very small, small level of views, right? If you're trying to bring awareness to a situation, you probably want to go to a bigger platform. I get it. So then we're going to keep playing it. And then on the bottom, and I'm going to move this little thing right here. And it says, just giving you a few receipts to give to your followers tonight. I'm coming out for blood. I'm coming for blood. L-O-L. Oh, okay. So Tyler's coming out for blood. Because he feels like he broke this story. And I want to make sure that, you know, and I'll say it. It sounds like he he was there have, have helping Caitlin, But maybe Caitlin didn't necessarily tell people that he was part of that team um, or anything. And he kind of played was the vessel to get some of these interviews. That could very well be the case, right? But at the end of the day, what is that really doing for the victims? What is that doing to tell us if these victims were minors or not? And that's the piece where I couldn't quite, the bigger picture. What is the intent? Are you helping him or do you want to blow your channel? Or is it both? Clout or help? It could be both, right? I don't know. But let me throw in this other clip. And I'm going to let you just view and you be the judge of that. This clip is very telling, okay? So... Keep your eyes and ears open on this one, all right? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't know that Kalen was actually going to, uh, was actually doing stuff with these girls and stuff like that, because I actually believed him. So okay. <clears throat> when I came, when I came and found out that he was actually having, uh, having sex with a minor, it was later on. And it was actually right around the time I hit you. Who did he hit? Remember that? Remember that receipt right there where he tells um, someone from the Tasha Camp team like, hey, hey, um, I don't want to be unprofessional. You know, I, I don't want to answer calls during the interview. Could this have been Toxic Diamond at the same time? And what confirmed it was I gave him a call because me and him, we had got through a falling out because of some other stuff, which I'm not even going to mention because she's not getting no cloud on this. She's not getting no cloud for me, but we got into some, we got into, uh, we got into an altercation because of something. Right. And when we got into that altercation, he seen that I was like invested, investigating her. Well, okay. Let me give you hold on, real quick. Let me just give you the story. Basically I went out, <laughs> I went out, on a Saturday night, uh, LA mm -hmm. just opened back up, so we're so you know we're out and uh, mingling and stuff. I had went out, I had talked to this girl, and this girl was filming me or whatever, and she found out that I was actually in contact with Kaylin. Now she did a she filed a um she filed a police report on Kaylin back in 2015. Now this was before. I think 2015 or 2016, some somewhere around that time. Now, mm. this was before this whole allegation started going on in 2018. So this was before this. She said she doesn't mess with him because of that. And now she can't mess with me because of that. He found out, come to find out, he was creeping on my account. He come to come to find out, he sees that I'm messing, uh, I'm messing with this girl. And he's like, bro, what are you doing? Why are you following my ah, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, bro, I didn't even know. I just found out. But mm. Having that being said, he was like, um, let me let me ask you a question. Have you been plotting against me? And I told him, I'm like, I'm not plotting against you, but I would be lying if I haven't if I haven't told you I've been investigating you. And that's when I found out that one of the girls who I'm not going to name, um, she was actually a minor. And how I found that out was her her Instagram page. She was po she posted a profile. She posted a picture when she went to prom. Mm -hmm. And when she went to prom, it was in 2019. He went to jail in 2018. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, I just and, want to make it clear. I did not say that he thinks he's innocent today. That is not what was said. Uh, I would appreciate if you would just listen 
instead of trying to be so opinionated and trying to steer my interview. I do not like that. And I don't want to block you, but I need you to calm down in the comment section because now you're, you're spitting out falsities that are not true. No one said that. No, at any time. So, and I apologize. I just wanted to address that person in the comment section because that's completely mm -hmm. untrue. So you're at the point now where you're investigating him and you're starting to find out a little bit more, but you, you're still kind of talking to him. Mm -hmm. Yes. But you're, but you're investigating and you like, wait a dang on minute. Right. So yeah. that's when I started really investigating. I'm like, okay, hold on. Let me go back and let me find out what's going on with KR. And that's when I saw the 10 alleged victims, which I'm the one who posted, because Tasha's trying to act like she posted that first, because she break the story. Mm -hmm. No, Maiden News TV is the one who posted all the uh, all the 10 pictures. So actually, I didn't even post it first. Maiden News TV posted first on his Instagram, and then I made a video about it. Mm -hmm. So having that being said, and one of the victims, uh, if you guys want to go find out who actually put him in jail, it's the three of eight of alleged victims of Kaylin Walker. Her name is Isabel. You can go on my, uh, you can go on my YouTube and find that out. You guys can find the whole story there. Um, when he did that, that's when I started investigating him more. And that's when I found out about the minor. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cause, because, you know, people were just confused. Why is it that you're supporting this man in the first place? If you feel like this is the case, uh, I but. Right, you didn't know and you had to investigate. All right. And as soon as right. I found out, that's when I started getting distance from him. That's when he started seeing I didn't call I wasn't calling him that much. I wasn't talking to him that much. That's when I became real controversial and he was talking about I was doing a lot of criticism and I wasn't giving him a lot of love and stuff like that because I started seeing his ways. And I'm like, bro, that's not that's not someone who's uh someone who's innocent doesn't move the way he does. Even after his court case, um, I didn't even tell y'all. Um, even after his uh or not his court case, um when me and him got into um, an argument, he said that I was trying to use his name for money and clout. And I was like, hmm. what type of clout? You haven't got to the argument part yet. You're moving too far ahead. Okay. Yeah, you're going too right. far ahead. They don't even know. Now we got to, we're going to close with the, where the case ended in the argument. Right, okay. Right. But we're not there yet. Give, give it, <laughs> give it, give it 10 more minutes. Cause right. we're going on an hour and 20 minutes. After that point, we, we can shut it down. All, All right. right. We get to the end. Uh, All right, so let's go back to Miss Tasha K. Okay. Let's go to the context and what it was you got from her interview with Caitlin. Did you watch the interview? I did not watch the interview. You did not watch the interview. I did not. What? 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 What did you hear of the interview? What was the the thing? Did, what did Kaylin talk to you about in regards to the interview? Because even after Kaylin went out there without you, you continued to be to befriend him, correct? Right. Right. So uh, we did talk about the interview. Um, in the after you found after you found out about the minor, what did you do? What did I do? I, well, I confronted Kaylin. I called Kaylin and I, oh, actually, well, I didn't confront Kaylin at first. Actually, I told my partner, uh, mm -hmm. Made in News TV and I mm -hmm. told him, Hey, bro, I know we, I know we grow, I know we grew a, a, a tight bond with Kaylin, but I got to tell you some real shit, bro. This is what happened. This is what I found out. I showed him the pictures. I showed him the dates and he was like, Oh my God, this might have happened. And he said, what, what do you want to do about this? And I said, bro, honestly, I don't want to go, I don't want to go to him and tell that because I don't want to ruin that relationship, but I want to hold off for, for a minute and I want to do some more investigation before I come to him with this. Now, that's when that happened with the whole, uh, uh, when I went out, um, to the club and found out, you know, the girl was doing the sexual assault stuff because I was investigating her too. Cause I was trying to find out how old she was and doing all this stuff, but, Shit hit the fan, he found out, and then that's when I confronted him. I mean, that's when he confronted me and told me, have I been plotting against him? And that's when I've been, that's when I told him, hey, bro, I've been, I'm not been plotting against you, but I have been investigating you. And at that point, I stopped, mm -hmm. I put our hands out because I mean, I put my hands up because I'm like, I already found out at least one, and there's three that's saying that they were minor. Mm, so there are three women that are saying that they were minors at the time that they had consensual sex with them. They're not denying that it was consensual. They're just saying, well, I was a minor. No, no, no. They're denying no, they're denying that. They're denying see, and this is they're the thing. denying that it was consensual. Yeah, they're they're denying that. They're saying that they raped that he raped them. Now, that's what oh. I don't believe. 
See, I don't believe that Kaylin raped these girls. Honestly, the reason why I don't believe that is because Kaylin at the time, he wasn't no superstar or anything like that, but he was well known. He was verified. He was well known. He's not an ugly dude. Why would the, why the fuck would he need to rape a girl? So I'm not understanding that. I know a lot of people be like, it's not about the, the, the sexuality. It's about the power and stuff like that. Me personally, I don't get rapey vibes from, uh, from, uh, KR. So do you guys see why? why for at least for for this rabbit with adhd really really severe why i got kind of stuck i'm like i feel like i got three or four different answers in one interview about the same kind of question that was being asked right and so now i'm wondering and i'm going to show the first clip that i showed initially when we started okay because this is the first response that he had all right i'm gonna i'm gonna play it up and you guys will see She took down the uh, video. Now, this is coming from a source and people coming from my DMs that's telling me this. But the reason why she actually took down the interview is because she just found out that I've already known that Kaylin is actually guilty of not actually raping these girls, but as of actually having sex with a minor. That I've already known that Kaylin is actually guilty of not actually raping these girls, but as of actually having sex with a minor. That I've already known that Kaylin is actually guilty of not actually raping these girls, but as of actually having sex with a minor. This is how the interview started. This is why he said that his response was to uh, why Tasha K took the interview down because he already knew but we've already reviewed those receipts guys did he tell Tasha in one way or Tasha's camp at this point that he knew of minors being involved no no I didn't see any of this there so it is really weird to me that we still have yet to determine and you cannot ask the question you either were aware or you were not aware and it's okay if you're going to stand behind your friend, if that is what you're doing and standing behind your friend. But let's be factual. There were minors involved in this situation. And if I was a big platform, okay, like Tasha K, Mob Radio, all these other big ones, and I find out that there are victims behind what's happening, of course I'm going to fucking take that interview down. Of course I am. Of course I am. I have to protection, right? This is my livelihood. I have to take this and I'm going to take the steps and I'm sorry that you feel some type of way, but you're not part of the management team. I'm sorry. And if you were, then Kalen would have said so while we talked to him, right? Not only that, Kalen would have said, you know what? He's my advocate. Just like our Kelly had his, uh, what is it? Disaster crisis manager. Okay. Who turned out to be a fraud example. So there is no problem about vetting. But here's the other thing, guys, and we're not done. This is the last, 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 last part of this, I promise you. And um, some of you guys might have to watch again because I told you guys this was going to be a doozy. But we had to break it down a little bit, at least for me. So that way I'm like, I understand what's happening clip by clip. Okay. We contacted um, Kaylin. Okay. We totally contacted Kaylin. Um, and, and I, in my contact with him, I basically asked him like, Hey, can you, can you explain to me what this person is to you? And I'm going to show you what he responded in a DM. Now, mind you respectfully, he doesn't want to do interviews. I think I, I don't blame the guy, you know, um, he just met with Wiley. I think it was a couple of days ago. Go check out that interview. Cause it's very telling about that minor piece. And, uh, Wiley does, you know, grill him and say, Hey, um, you're doing this tour of interviews. Have you talked to your attorney? Like, it's probably not a good idea. And then you're leaking videos and sex tapes. It's probably not a good idea to do that. Right. Just a heads up. You probably don't want to do that. But, you know, you guys have to listen to his response. I'm going to direct you back to Wiley. Okay. But, but let's play this little clip right over 
here. And then you you be the judge of everything that you're hearing, okay? Dr. Umar Johnson, he, he says something like, he says something to the extent that God put, um, God must have put us in a situation where God must have made this happen. God made this happen to where me and you were supposed to be in connection, um, in contact. Also, and he said something to the, along those lines. Y'all, like, when he said that, I felt some type of way because it was like, bruh, God didn't do that. <laughs> God was not waiting. To, God did not hear your two hour speech. God did not wait two hours for you to finish your book signing and talk to you. God also didn't talk to you for another 15 to 20 minutes talking about the uh, the state of uh, the state of black America and what was going on with this uh, with this kid, um, Kaylin K.R. Walker. God didn't do that. That was Tyler. Now, if you want to say God, God sent a messenger to get us. In, yeah. For sure. And the messenger was Tyler Aviles. It was that nigga for sure. But I found that disrespectful because it was like, bro, you go out of your way to 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 not acknowledge me. You know what I mean? And then on top of that, we still never done an interview either. You told you get I mean, uh, Do you guys read that last part and I can definitely just put it go back on that little clip right there but basically he is saying um that he was told he was going to be found guilty okay he was trying to make money off my name i don't respect or care for anything that comes out of his mouth moving forward okay i mean he's in his right to feel that way we don't really know what that friendship or partnership or if there was any of that but like i said uh Kaylin Walker has uh, over 100K followers in his own YouTube page. So my thought was, well, if this was really about helping another YouTuber, I mean, Kaylin could totally have reached out and done all that. I'm not really sure if it was just helping a friend when he was down and out, which, you know, a lot of us tend to do, right? We want to help our friends. And that's how I see this. However, I don't know if Tyler or the other bloggers saw it this way. And so my thought is this, and especially on that clip that I just played on Tyler, that I found to be very interesting. And I'm not going to, um, you guys can go check out that clip. I found it to be very disgusting. There was a piece where he said, and I quote, that him helping, him helping Kalen Walker through this process, he lost subscribers and vagina. He lost subscribers and vagina. That's what he lost. So I, I don't know. I, <laughs> I'm telling you, I was very turned off by that. And also the, the God complex of, you know, it was me. I was the vessel. It wasn't God. Well, I, okay. All right, then, then let that be. Yes. I said it this way because Virginia, cause I, I'm trying to monetize this video. Hello. <laughs> yes. Check it out. His own words, not mine. Obviously, I did not want to post that up. The other ticket I wanted to tell you or another token of information. You know, this whole thing, um, Toxic Diamond was talking about how Tasha was calling her a lot during this interview she was doing. Now, I got some receipts on that because I did ask. I, I was just curious. Did Tasha really call you eight times? Like she knew you were going to interview this guy. My thought was, well, if she had to take her interview down, is it possible that maybe like she was trying to call you to give you the heads up? I don't know. But once I get that receipt and vetted and sealed and signed and everything, I'm going to put it up on the community post. Okay. Cause that will help confirm or deny. These receipts are the same ones that were read by toxic diamond. The only difference is, is that we actually caught the in between, right? Of him going out for blood and him, you know, trying to take a dig. But again, this is what Kalen feels. This is his DM. And he did give me permission to use it. He said, people are trying to make money off this name. I don't respect or care for anything that comes out of his mouth moving forward. You guys make your own opinion. Everything that is said is alleged. Uh, I really appreciate everyone in the chat. Thank you so much. Make sure you hit the like button. And if you don't, that's okay. Reach out to us. You know, we are down the rabbit hole, looking at things different getting stuck, 
having ADHD. That's what we do here. All right, wrap it up.